So this week I'm going to be working on some mods for my Camaro. Now, I don't generally feel the need to do mods to this car. Part of why I bought it is because it really doesn't need much, if anything. It's pretty much perfect the way it is, in my opinion, right? It has everything that I normally do to a car. Uh, suspension, wheels, brakes, exhaust, etc., etc. It's it's pretty much all done from the factory. It's track ready to go from the factory. So I normally just maintain this car, do fluids, things of that nature. Lately, though, I have been getting the itch for a little bit more power. Now, I don't plan to be any kind of drag or roll racing star. I don't really care for it. It's not my thing. So because I'm an autocross and track guy. I'm gonna be keeping the power mods on the simple side. So I do have a C8 Corvette LT2 intake manifold, which is known to make more power. I'm gonna do a larger throttle body and E85, right? I might do headers and a cam maybe eventually further on down the line, but for now, I'd be content to have the intake manifold, the throttle body, E85 and a tune. I think that would be plenty uh, for my needs for autocross and track day. Other stuff that I have planned for the car, I mean, it's just aesthetic. There's not much, again, that I think this car needs, aesthetically speaking, but I always did feel that the 1LE would have benefited if it had the side skirts from the ZL1 um, and ZL1 1LE, so I did acquire a set of ZL1 side skirts. So those are these uh, gray side skirts that are sitting there. I do have to paint the gray part white to match my car and then the lower section I have to hit with like a satin clear in order to match this satin black accents all throughout the car. But in general, it should be a fairly simple project to get that on there and my car will just look better with the little black sort of blade side skirt that sticks out of there. I think it matches the front lip of the SS1 LE a little bit better than just having a plain side skirt would. Um, other than that, I don't really see myself doing much in the way of aesthetic mods. At some point I might do wheels and tires, but that's really more for having a set of track tires than for looks in and of themselves. Of course, you know, wheels always make a car look dope. The wheels on this car from factory are amazing in my opinion, so I haven't, you know, been motivated to change them prior, but I will do that in the future. Now looking at what I've got over here, this is an E85 or flex fuel conversion kit from Wild Hammer Motorsports. I got this discounted Black Friday price of like 200 bucks. I'm sure that you could probably piece this stuff together yourself and maybe save a buck here or there, but for the hassle, you know, they already took the time to uh, put it all together for you, bless you with a very simple, affordable mod. Why not bless them with some of your income, right? So out here supporting the Camaro, you know, parts guys. So I've ordered this and I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a basic rundown of what it consists of so you can check it out. So this right here is a factory GM fuel hose. This is a tool for removing GM fuel hoses. These things have like four clips inside of them. You basically slide this up the lower tube and push it in and it will push those clips in and allow you to back one of these hoses off. That's gonna help you with your stock hose. This is a factory GM flex fuel sensor which is what's gonna be metering the E85 content of the gas that you're putting in the car. And finally, we have the wiring harness. This is the only component that's custom in this kit. Everything else is off the shelf GM. So if you were gonna piece this together yourself, you would have to make this harness yourself. Um, you know, would require effort. You'd have to source factory GM connectors. This one goes to the E85 sensor. This one I believe goes to an EVAP sensor over by the valve cover. This grounds to the valve cover itself. Um, and this is the magic right here. This is the special sauce. This little pin clips right into a pin on a connector in your fuse box. So basically because this motor, there's a version of it that comes inside the trucks, the Escalade for example, with flex fuel from the factory, the computer actually already has the setting to run the flex fuel sensor for this car in this car and there's actually a slot on the connector for you to pop this pin into. You just have to remove like a little gray filler and pop the pin in and then go get a tune and they turn the sensor on inside the computer and now your car can read E85, which is pretty cool. It makes it very cheap and simple and straightforward to convert one of these cars to E85. Much more work is involved, you know, in another vehicle typically. So that's really 
all there is to it. I do know that if you have a later 6th gen Camaro than mine, I think from 2019 up, maybe 2020 and up, you won't find the empty slot for this pin. There's like a piece of plastic in the way, it's like sealed off, but you basically just poke a hole in the plastic and then you can still pop the pin in, it'll clip into places it's supposed to and everything will work. So just keep that in mind if you have a later one. Mine is a 2017, so I'm not particularly worried about it. As you can see, my engine bay is pretty dirty. My car in general is spectacularly dirty, so definitely need to go ahead and give it a wash. And I'll make a video of the way that I wash it. I think some of you will appreciate that. I have a no bucket method that uh, doesn't reuse any dirty rags. But let's take a look at this. So the first thing we want to do in order to make this work is we want to pop these covers off. Now these things are not fancy. You just kind of do this, right? And it should come out without too much drama. Got to repaint this, started to fade. I don't know why. Maybe because my engine bay has been allowed to get so dirty. All right, go to the other side, do the same thing. Alright, that's out of the way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and undo the clips that hold the fuel hose onto the top of the engine cover. Now, you're going to need like a screwdriver or something. There's a little tab on the front that you got to push in and then with something else you got to pull it up. I'll show you what that looks like. You kind of want to push the tab here and stick something here and pop this out. It's going to take a bit of force. But I'd already done that side to figure it out. Do the same thing here. And there it goes. Now it's finally out. For a janky piece of plastic, that is on really tight. Okay. Now let's undo the clip that retains that hose on the opposite side where we want to release it, basically on the driver's side of the engine. Alright, so see this little retaining clip here? You just kind of tug this back with your hand and that should come out without too much difficulty. You gotta kind of work it, but kind of hooks and then clips. So when you put it back in, you hook it and then clip it over. All right, now I should be able to use my fuel hose removal tool to remove that hose. So this should split. Now it's coming up. There's the fuel hose, and there's fuel everywhere. Fantastic. So maybe have rags when you do this. Where the heck are my rags? Always have a roll of mechanics rags around. And and do a fuel line and then there's no mechanics rags in sight. Hopefully none of that gets on my headers. Right, it's off my folds, I should say. Probably won't turn the car on for a couple days. Just, uh, you know, let that evaporate. The smell of fuel in the afternoon. That's off. So I'll go ahead and I'll add my new fuel hose there in place of that one. All right, that's not going to go anywhere. However, you should still. Replace the retaining pin, clip, whatever you want to call it, this little clip. It's 
that. That's not going to go anywhere. Now I've got this. I've got this. And I can kind of just route my E85 sensor to them. And I really think I'm going to see if I can't find shorter GM fuel hose so that I can just have two short hoses holding that on. I think it would make a lot more sense than to have these long hoses twisted back, but we'll see. All right, now let's do a little bit of work with our flex fuel sensor before we pop that in. Let's take this guy. I'm going to open it. All right. Here's a sensor. I'm going to set it up so this white part is toward the firewall. Um, I don't really want it floating, so I'm probably going to use this double-sided tape to hang it up somewhere. Probably put it up there in the engine bay. Basically, I've seen where people do these installs and they just leave it floating, and that uh, doesn't make me happy. So I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to cut some of this stuff and put it on. I need something to cut this with. All right. Not certain how effective this will be, but I'm hoping it'll do the trick. I really, really don't want this just free floating in here. So, and for reference, this stuff is uh, three M thirty pound Scotch Mount Extreme double sided tape. Let's find out how heat resistant it is, shall we? All right, so I'm going to take these little red caps off. This hose, bend over, put it here. That's in, you gotta push it till the clips get past this part. So it really retains it. All right, that's nice there. Um, you know what, I would rather this sit up under this hose would be a better fit. Oh, I gotta get it here. Guess what I'm not gonna be able to do? <laughs> Slide that in there. Ah, crap. Big crapola. But actually, still not impossible because I can undo the line on the other side. Remove the annoying little retaining clip. And of course, this will probably spew some fuel. You've got to be kidding me. Ah, oh, fantastic. That spewed a ton of fuel. Really annoying. Yeah, I'm not gonna turn this car on for a little bit because shit's gonna catch fire if I do. 
Oh, so I can do this. There it goes, right back on. Now my garage stinks like gasoline. Change out these gloves so I can get rid of the smell. All right, I've got the hose set up the way that I want it. So I should be able to just kind of glue this here. Let me just put these clips in. Sucker on. That's because the hose wants to pull it at an angle. Well, I'll have to make a bracket at some point. For now, I'll just leave that there. Kind of pisses me off, but what are you going to do? Let's put this retainer back on. Make sure all this is clipped together real nice and tight. You wouldn't want this stuff backing out while it's running. Put fuel everywhere and uh, light your engine bay on fire. Alright, but the sensor's in. Not really happy with where it's sitting. Really need some kind of bracket there. It's very hard to get the hoses at an angle where they'll play nice. Um, and just let this sit glued on. surface here is also kind of annoying, like it's not flat. That would be flat. Oh well. For now I'll tolerate it I guess. Now I will go ahead and install the harness. Mind you, this is the first time I'm ever doing this. I could have probably done this whole install off camera and then come back and done it on camera, right? And it would have looked super easy and you guys would be like, oh wow, that's super cake. And then you'd go do it and you'd be upset because you'd be doing stuff and you're like, man, it's not as easy as it looked in the video. Well, that's why I kind of try to show you guys the mistakes that I make and the struggles that I go through so that you could see that it's not all you know, roses and uh, fairy tales. So here's the harness. It's got to go into my E85 sensor. Alright, we're plugged in. I want this to run down here. Thank you. 